Hello everyone, and welcome to worship at St Paul's Lutheran Church in Red Hill, Pennsylvania. I'm Jason Launders, and I'm the President of the Church Council. Today is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, and the altar flowers are given to the glory of God and in honour of Amy McPherson's birthday given by her parents, Donna and Brian Stever. The chancel flowers are given to the glory of God and in honour of the 37th wedding anniversary of Judy and Thomas Zepp on October the 15th, presented by Agnes and Charles Zepp. And the chancel flowers are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of our parents, Guy and Evelyn Leiby, and dear sister Nancy L. Bell, presented by Tom, Sue and Mary. So let's begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Here's the prayer for today. Lord of the feast, you've prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honourable, just and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen.
in your spark packet for some fun activities related to today's message. If you need a spark packet, please contact the church office. Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 through 14. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man who was not wearing a wedding robe, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him out into the utter darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. May the Spirit of God fill us with peace and joy, and lead us to faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What do you remember about 1981, or perhaps you've learned about it since? Was it that Ronald Reagan became president? Or Sandra Day O'Connor, the first female Supreme Court Justice? Maybe the first and actually the second launches of the Space Shuttle? Perhaps it was IBM's first PC with MS-DOS? Or, for those of us with home computers, the Sinclair ZX81? or, as I remember it, the ZX81. Maybe you remember the wedding of a former nursery school teacher to the heir of a 1,000-year-old family business. Of course, I'm talking about the royal wedding, the wedding of Lady Di to Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales. A real royal wedding. As a boy, I remember the big build-up to the day there was a huge excitement. You could not get away from it. 
the route between the palace and the cathedral was lined with flags, with soldiers and thousands of people. If you wanted the best spot to watch it, you had to be camping there for a couple of days beforehand. Of course, there was special music, and who can forget that dress? The shops were full of mementos, and millions thronged outside Bucking Palace after the wedding to be part of the big day. Millions watched on TV, just like me. A few days later, the dress and all the presents went on display in St. James's Palace. And we lined up for hours in the hot sunshine just to get a glimpse, and that was me. It's just that sort of wedding that we read about in today's reading. It's a royal wedding. And we can all understand just how big and important weddings are. Every culture has their own experiences, their own traditions for weddings. Thousands are spent on a single day. We've seen pre programs like Say Yes to the Dress. And in Jesus' time, it was really just the same. They were multi-day affairs, wine flowed. In fact, you can remember the first miracle report reported by St. Mark. It was the changing of water into wine at the wedding. And in today's parable, we read about a royal wedding. The first part is very similar to a parable reported by Luke called the parable of the banquet. Clearly, the king is God. The bridegroom is Jesus. The wedding feast is a picture of heaven. And those who were invited were waiting just to be notified when it was the best time to come. And they expected that notification at any minute. Remember, this is a royal wedding. Imagine if Nancy Reagan, who went to that wedding in 1981, imagine the diplomatic brouhaha if she had turned down the invitation. And just before in this parable, we're, we're told that Jesus is talking directly to the Pharisees and the priests. So you know that he's talking to them and they were expecting the Messiah to come. They knew the invitation was coming, but they ignored it. In fact, the parable tells us they do not deserve to come. So the servants are sent out to invite anyone and they all came. That bit, I think, is quite easy to understand. But then there's a big kicker at the end and Matthew's parables are full of these little kickers. And take a bit of, you know, wondering what it all means. In this case, the king notices that one of the guests isn't dressed properly. And it's possible that the guests were actually given robes as they came in, so they had really no excuse not to be dressed properly. And not changing showed a huge amount of disrespect to the host, in this case, the king. The penalty is severe. He is bound up and cast out into darkness. What did this guest do so wrong? Surely all we have to do is accept the invitation to the wedding feast and go and enjoy the party. The point that Jesus is making is that we all need repentance. John the Baptist taught repentance. Jesus taught repentance. The apostles taught the importance of repentance. And many years later, Martin Luther also taught the importance of repentance. In fact, remember those theses that Martin Luther nailed to the door in Wittenberg? The first one of those reads, When our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ, said, Repent, he intended that the entire life of believers should be repentance. But repentance is one of those words that we use in church a lot, but we don't use outside very much. We kind of think we know what it means, but when we're put on the spot, we're likely to mumble and kind of grab our dictionaries. And it's crucial that we know what repentance means. In fact, it could be argued that Luther's understanding of the word repentance led to, to the whole Reformation. In fact, the Reformation was a form of repentance. So what is repentance? The Greek word is metanoia, which means to change one's mind. In our everyday lives, once we've made up a mind, 
it's often difficult to change it back again. Some things are trivial, like what's your favorite ice cream or who's your favorite sports team. But other things are change, do affect our lives a whole lot more. Imagine if you, if you were a big climate change denier and you suddenly changed to be a climate change activist. You wouldn't do that without any thought. Or what about your political allegiance? Are you Republican or Democrat? I'm sure that swapping sides is not something that you would do without a really, really good reason to do it. With the exception of ice cream, all these choices will only occur after a great deal of internal thought, reflection and possibly even anguish. You will likely regret past life choices. You will likely feel the need to seek forgiveness for your past actions that you now realize were so wrong. The new climate changed activists will likely feel remorse for their previous choices. The recently switched political activist may seek forgiveness from their new friends for his previous thoughts and actions against them. The change will also result in outward changes to our lives. The newly converted climate activist will likely trade in their gas guzzling SUV for that hybrid vehicle or if you're a political activist, changing those lawn signs, your t-shirt, your hats, very obvious to your neighbors. I'm sure you'll all agree that making changes like these is only done after an awful lot of thought. How much more difficult is the repentance that Jesus requires of us? In this parable, the guest came to the party, but didn't examine himself to see what changes were necessary. The guest didn't change into his robe, he didn't show gratitude for what the king had done for him, offering a free place at the banquet. Being clothed in the wedding robe reminds us of our new life. Without it, we don't fit in. His outward appearance gave the game away. He hadn't repented. With repentance, we have Christ-given power to live life each day, trusting in the grace of God. Repentance isn't something you do once when you become a Christian. Luther made it clear that repentance was a vital part throughout our Christian lives. So whether you've been a Christian for a hundred years or just one day, we must continually examine ourselves. Ask yourself, what needs changing? What is God inviting you to change? Are you selfish? Are you wasting money? Are you lazy? Then seek forgiveness. You've likely hurt somebody in the past. And then it will naturally come that you will change your ways. People will see the difference. Paul taught us the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then we can enjoy the wedding feast with all the other royal guests. May the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Gracious host, fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. May we invite and welcome all to your table of boundless grace. As creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect our earthly home. All valleys, mountains, pastures, and waters from misuse and pollution. Almighty God, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Let your kindness and gentleness likewise be known among those who are weary or ill, especially all those on our prayer list. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers and caretakers who see to their needs. Bless as well ministries that provide needed clothing and personal care assistance in this community. Listen as we call upon you, Good Shepherd, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I hope this time of worship has nurtured your faith and helped you prepare for another week of discipleship. Thank you for the honour of your presence. A few announcements. Please prayerfully keep in mind our capital campaign, funding our newly repaired parking lot. Various ways of contributing to this effort are possible, from weekly or monthly giving to annual gifts. Kindly consider how you can be of support, designating your contributions to St Paul's and noting them as parking lot repair. Open Link still needs us to be the peanut butter and jelly church for their families. Please donate small jars to this worthy cause. You can leave them in the covered doorway next to Fry Road or bring them to worship if you like. Victory House is working hard to help those in need of a real meal. Read about it in our email newsletter and please consider donating to this worthy cause Without your support, they cannot continue this function. All Saints Sunday will be November the 1st. If you have a loved one you would like remembered by having their name placed on our list and having a candle lit in their honour, please send a note to Karen Quinn at stpaulredhill.org or call the church 215-679-5553, extension 110, and be sure to include the name correctly spelled uh, in your message. Thank you very much. May God our Creator fill you with love, grace you with peace in our Lord Jesus Christ, and bless you with the guidance and power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.